Hey guys, I'm Richard Oldner and welcome to the channel. Before we get going, make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all these crazy dyno tests. Today we're taking a look at the other guy's LT motor, and not just an LT motor, it's a V6, the LV3, and we're going to take a look at a cam test that the guys from Brian Tooley Racing did on the little LT V6. Before we get to our test on the LV3, I wanted to do a very quick test and show you what happened when the guys from Brian Tooley Racing did testing on the L83, which is the 5.3 meter V8. The reason I want to show you that is because the cam technology that they're using for the LV3 actually came from this 5.3 liter testing. So it worked out very well. So this was a basically stock 5.3 liter uh, L83 and it made a little over 400 horsepower, 405 horsepower and 435 foot pounds. And to put this into perspective on how well these work, here is a stock 5.3 liter LM7 that I normally get from the wrecking yard. <laughs> a little over 350 horsepower, 355, and 381 or 2 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see, compared to the 5.3 liter, the modern 5.3 liter, the LA3, <laughs> the older one is just not cutting the mustard. The better one is basically better everywhere. It's better down low. It's better up top. It's basically better in every way. and makes a lot more power. But let's take a look and see what happened when they added their camshaft technology to this thing. So here is the biggest cam that they put in it. I think that this one was to 220 cam. And so you can see, um, not only did it pick up power everywhere, we only they tested it from 25 or 2600 on up, but it improved the power output dramatically from 405 horsepower up to 478 horsepower. Peak torque was up also from 436 foot pounds up to 456 foot pounds. Again, with gains all the way from 26 or 2700 all the way out. So not only did you get big gains on the top from a cam that was already working fairly well with the variable cam timing, but you got big gains. Now this thing will rev all the way out to 6,500 RPM, but they weren't done there <laughs> because they wanted to get this thing, you know, making some serious power. So what they did was take off the factory long runner intake manifold and put on the MSD, MSD intake manifold, actually designed for the L86 and LT1 with its short runners. And naturally with short runners, it did lose power down low compared to the long runner intake manifold. But what they were looking for was a big number, hopefully beyond 500 horsepower. And that's exactly what they got with the equipped the MSD intake. This combination produced 513 horsepower. Peak torque was actually down slightly to 444 foot pounds. And as you can see, the short runner intake manifold lost out from about 53 or 5400 RPM and below the short runner lost out to the longer runner intake manifold. So honestly, this might not be the way to go unless you're really wanting to run this thing from like 5000 to 7000 RPM and you're drag racing. Know that that short runner manifold will work pretty well compared to the long runner. But for most of us, I think for most guys having a 5.3, putting a cam in it with a long runner intake manifold still probably the way to go now let's check out when they applied this cam check technology to the lv3 4.3 liter v6 now it's time to take a look at the fantastic v6 the new one the lv3 and as we see it has a bore and stroke of 3.92 bore and a 3.622 stroke so it shares the stroke with its bigger brothers, the V8, the L83 5.3 liter, and the L86 6.2 liter, they both have the same stroke crank, although the split pin crank in the V6 obviously is different than the other two V8s, but it doesn't share the same bore as the others. It has a 3.92 bore on the V6, compared to the 378 bore on the 5.3 and the 4065 bore. So it doesn't share a piston design or a bore size with either of its V8 brothers. If you take a look at the old Vortec, the 4.3 liter v uh, V6 that they used to run, that one was made about 195 horsepower, but it was actually three quarters of a 350 V8 because it shared the same bore and stroke. It had a four inch bore and a 3.48 inch stroke. It just had fewer cylinders, but this new LV3 isn't like that. 
compared to its bigger V8 brothers. But as we'll see, it has a lot going for it. For one, it's E85 compatible right from the factory. It's got a 72 millimeter drive-by wire throttle body. It's got a long runner intake manifold, which helps promote power production. It has really good aluminum cylinder heads with a 193-156 valve package. It's got 60cc combustion chambers. It has a pretty good size camshaft in it. Actually, the factory cam is a 500-492 lift split and a 193-199 degree duration split at 113 degree lobe separation angle, but it is a variable cam timing, so they sweep that quite a bit. So as we saw, the difference between the the 5.3 liter with a variable cam, which we know helps a lot, and a Gen 3 or Gen 4 5.3 liter is dramatic. So just the variable cam all by itself makes a big difference. But the better heads on these later LT motors make a really big difference. Plus, this LV3, like its big brother V8s, also has 11 to 1 compression, direct injection. It has oil-cooled pistons. Um, it has a variable displacement oil pump. It's got a factory windage tray. So it has a lot of things going for it. And it was rated by GM at 285 horsepower and 305 and even more if you added E85 to the mix because the E85 would allow you to have more timing. You make more power with the E85 and away we go. But let's take a look and see what happened when we made a camshaft change or when the guys from Brian Tooley made a camshaft change. They ran a junkyard, which is, you know, this is my jams. They ran a junkyard LV3 on the dyno with long tube headers. And you can see on the dyno the way that they configured this. They ran it with the factory management system and James Short was doing all the tuning on it. And after they got this thing all dialed in and running, the um, factory combination produced Produced 318 horsepower and 356 foot-pounds of torque. And just like we saw with the factory rating, it makes more torque than horsepower, telling us that there's a lot of power left to be had, and especially, as we'll see, from cam timing. Uh, credit the variable cam timing for having a broad power curve and stuff, and this worked out very well. As we'll find out, <laughs> unfortunately, this particular test um, and this power curve generated by the factory run was hampered by the fact that, and they didn't find this out until after they were done testing, but the uh, the variable cam timing was actually um, either damaged or locked up, and so they were having a problem getting the thing to do its variable cam magic. They're going to go ahead and retest this to get another baseline on the factory deal, but even with that, we're going to see that uh, a camshaft like the one that they used, the guys from Brian Tooley, this is was their first development cam that they ran, 210 degrees of duration. I'll go ahead and get the specs for you guys. Uh, if they'll provide them, I'll go ahead and list them up here. This might be early in the development, but as we can see, this thing definitely responds to more cam timing. As we can see, this combination picked the power out output up to 368 horsepower and 372 foot-pounds of torque. As we can see now with the cam upgrade, this little V6 is making pretty good power. In fact, this is the kind of power and torque that we would associate from a Gen 3 or Gen 4 like stock 5.3 liter V8. It makes more than a 4.8 does, and it's already making basically as much as, with this cam upgrade, as much as a 5.3 liter that we normally get from the junkyard. So it's doing very, very well, and it's running all the way out clean to 6,500 RPM. They did do a valve spring upgrade on this, and you guys might be wondering why is the factory number higher than the factory rated number? Just like when we run the stuff at West Tech when they're doing the stuff at Brian Tooley, it obviously has an optimized tune because James knows what he's doing. They ran this with long tube headers and a good exhaust on it. They also have uh, minimal uh, accessories on the drive assembly. And so it is it is working um, under an optimized condition, whereas a factory one is tested with all of the factory things present, meaning that it has the complete air intake system on it. It has all the accessories. It has a complete exhaust with cats and exhaust and, and all the way back to the to out, out the cat back. It's also run with the factory conservative tune on it. So this is not that. <laughs> but that's why we wanted to show the effect of the cam timing with both, you know, run in the same configuration. So they ran this thing at Brian Tooley Racing with the LV3. And this is really exciting for me because I like to see these little other guys. This is the other guy's LT motor, basically, the little version of the LT motor. And I think good things are going to happen with this, that they're already at 368 horsepower. I see them easily getting up near 400 with a little more work on this thing. And then as we know, if you start adding boost to a really good naturally aspirated motor, you're going to have a really good combo. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway on this development testing on the LV3 
4.3 liter LT V6 motor with the guys at Brian Tooley Racing. Well, here's my takeaway. And all of this development that the guys from Brian Tooley Racing have put into their V8 versions of these LT motors, I'm talking about the L83, the 5.3 liter, the L86 and the LT1 6.2 liter versions, although the L86 and the LT1 are very, very similar. In fact, almost identical. Now they've got with a cam and intake manifold and headers a 5.3 liter that's easily exceeding over 500 horsepower which is really impressive they've got lt1 stuff with all the stuff thrown at it you know different ported heads and cams and intake manifolds and all kinds of stuff they got stuff approaching 800 horsepower naturally aspirated which is really impressive and it just goes to show you there's a lot of power potential in the new LT engine versions, just like there was with the old LS engine versions, and that's just nothing but good news for all of the performance guys. But the cool thing is, and as we saw in this video, all the development done, camshafts and heads and things that they applied to the V8 design has carried over and now they're applying it to the little V6, which I think is awesome because that thing already has impressive power right from the factory and to get it to go even more, I'm very excited about, you know, camshaft, ported head, head studs, you know what I'm thinking, and then boost. I'm Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.